Kitchen and a new episode of What's for Dinner. Tonight we're going to make stuffed peppers. I sat down, it is Saturday, and on Saturdays I typically sit down and I write my menu for the week and then we go into grocery shopping. And that way you, you save time when you make a list for one thing, you save money when you make a menu, and you save frustration in the middle of the week when you don't know what you're going to have for supper. So you really do save on a lot of fronts when you sit down and make a menu plan and really sit down and do your shopping list. But let's see what goes in this. Oh, sorry, Rick is showing you my menu. Um, these are my menus for this week. And um, tonight we're having stuffed peppers. <laughs> Tomorrow night we're having pot roast and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, you can pick and choose throughout the week, but we do pretty much keep to the menu. So that's... Uh, that's what Thursday we Thursday is always pizza night. That's what we do. Thursday is always pizza night in our house. So I'm just going to show you that we're having stuffed peppers because I happened to be in a store yesterday to pick up some cat food and I saw that peppers were really a very good price. So I thought, well, we haven't had stuffed peppers in a long time. So what I'm going to do, and I could have, had I thought about it sooner, I didn't even think about it. I could have used the leftover stuffed cabbage filling that I froze. But I didn't, so I have some, I bought two pounds, two and a quarter pounds of ground beef. I have six of these really beautiful green peppers that we're going to use. I have a large can of ground tomatoes, or you can use crushed tomatoes, or you can use your favorite tomato or pasta sauce. We're going to use a little ketchup, a little Worcestershire, and some par-cooked rice. This is my favorite go-to rice when I'm going to bake it in an application like this because it cooks a lot more quickly than the long grain. So um, what I want to show you how to do first is how I cut the pepper. Now this pepper sits kind of nice. It's a little wobbly. The wobbly pepper. So all you have to do if it's wobbly is take a little bit off the bottom so it sits flat. You see how it's flat now? And it, because peppers tend to be a little bumpy on the bottom so you want it to sit flat when it's in the baking dish. So then I'm going to take a good half an inch off the top of that. And then, I'm going to just, if it'll work for me, oh, see it broke. Anyway, don't do that. I like to pop the top. The center usually comes right out, but that's all right. No worries. Pull the seed pot out, and then take a spoon. And just like you would with your Halloween pumpkin, kind of scrape these white ribs out of there. clean as a whistle. Then all you do is you take it and you just give it a good rinse in the sink. Give the top a rinse. And this won't matter because when you sit down to eat it, it's just not going to matter. And I'm going to put these in this pie plate here. I'll set those off to the side. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to go put these in the microwave for 30 seconds. Just because it'll help break the pepper down a little bit. I'm just gonna put them in there for a minute. Then we're gonna get started on this filling. I'm gonna go ahead and use my KitchenAid, so I need to go get the paddle. I'm gonna use the regular, regular paddle on this. We just drop on the meat right in there, and I'm throwing it everywhere. Okay, so what I'm also going to put in here is I'm going to put a little of this sauce, and very similarly to how we did the stuffed cabbage filling, I'm going to season this with onion powder, about one and a half teaspoons, the same of garlic powder. There's peppers in the microwave because I'm, I'm par cooking them for dinner. A little marjoram, remember we said that marjoram and beef are really good friends, so this will help season them up good. And because I love it, and I know my friend Cat's Cradle does too, and so does Rick. Oh, sorry honey. I'm going to put some celery seed in here because I think that'll add a really nice pop of flavor. And I'm going to add some Worcestershire sauce. 
What, honey? Do you want these? Hey, yeah, you can bring them over here. I'd say about a teaspoon of Worcestershire and a good squirt of ketchup. Ketchup is the magic ingredient. Two to three tablespoons. And then, oh, it smells good already. How could it not smell good? Worcestershire sauce, ketchup, tomato sauce. All kinds of goodness. Okay. And now I'll measure the rice. You can push that in now. I'm done. Um, I'm going to do a cup and a half of rice. And remember, this rice is going to almost double. Well, it will double. I'm going to put it on the mixer with the paddle. And just, just because, you can mix this by hand. Just because I'm putting it on the mixer doesn't mean you have to. It's all just personal preference. I want this done quick. And I'm going to put it on low. And I'm just going to mix all that stuff together. And then after it's mixed pretty well, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to feel it. And I'm going to see if I want to add more rice. I don't think I do. I think two pounds of meat and, and a cup and a half of rice is probably plenty. And I may want to put some pepper in there, which I think I'm definitely going to do. crush some right now. And then you may put like a teaspoon of salt. And, you know, stuffed peppers like stuffed cabbage or meatloaf or anything else, it is really a personal thing. Everybody has their own version. So this is my version. Uh, this is not even how my mom used to make them when I was growing up. So you can with bacon on the top of it, there goes some cracked black pepper. And about the same amount of sea salt. And there, we're going to call that good. You don't want to overmix the ground beef because when you overmix ground, uh, any ground meat, you're um, you're gonna make risk making it tough. This feels just right. It's not too heavy or thick. Um, it feels really nice. So now I am gonna go get a foil pan and I will be right back. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna, oh, I'm sorry, babe. Step it on feet. All right, now, here's our peppers, which aren't really all that soft. So it just doesn't, matter. I've got my oven preheating at 350 degrees, and I hope all these peppers fit in this pan. That's all I can say. We're gonna make them fit. They are gonna shrink a bit while they're cooking, so, oh, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect. And then we'll play the, the puzzle guessing game when it's time to, uh, you know, put the lids back on them. And then all you want to do is divide this meat among all of these pepper shells. And you don't want to pack it in there because if you pack it, pack it in there, then it's going to um, take a lot longer to cook. This smells so good. Doesn't it smell good? Mm -hmm. Oh, that one is a weird crooked. I should have paid more attention when I was choosing them. Oh well, no matter. Okay, that's done. Let's give our hands a quick wash. Anytime you touch raw meat, you want to wash your hands. You just never know. All 
right. Now, I need a little spoon here. We got a new silverware tray and it's all backwards now. Little tomato sauce on the top of each one. And then um, I'm just going to put the rest of this tomato sauce in the bottom of the pan. And this will help to steam the peppers as it cooks. I may actually add a little water in there. In fact, I think I will. I'm just going to use the can. This is a 28 ounce can. So we're going to do half or thereabouts, so we'll call it about a cup of water. Maybe a half a cup of water. Yeah. This isn't rocket science, right folks? It's cooking. Okay, and I'm going to take the ketchup and I'm going to squeeze that on the top too. I know this sounds odd, but it really tastes yummy when it's all done. Okay, and then um, for what it's worth, just pop these tops on. It doesn't matter. It's all going to shrink up anyway. And when it's finished cooking, you won't, they won't be recognizable in the first place. So, And here's the broken one. All right, so now we get foil. Foiled again. <laughs> Foiled again. And we get parchment because that's a tomato-based dish. And like I said before, the tomato sauce likes to eat through the foil. And we're going to need two pieces of foil today. Then we're going to get our little half sheet pan. Actually, it's a quarter sheet pan. The regular sheet pans I use technically are half sheet pan. This quarter sheet pan fits perfectly for that, uh, that foil pan. So we'll pop this into our preheated oven for about an hour. After an hour, we're probably going to be able to smell it. Your house is going to smell fabulous. We'll come back and we will fix you a plate stuffed peppers for dinner. Right, we'll be back. back. Now I have to tell you, if you're going to bake this at 350, you probably need to bake it for two hours because after it was in the oven for an hour at 350, it still wasn't done. So I cranked it up to 450 and I left it in for another half hour and now they're perfect. I like the little ketchup dollops. I know. Mm -hmm. So let's fix you a plate. This is uh, a pepper is a serving. And what I want to do I'm going to stir some sauce over it. I want to cut it in half so you can see what it looks like. So let me grab my knife. Ooh, hot. It's very hot. We're going to take the little hat off and then We'll let you see the inside. And this is when you will go back and, and have extra sauce if you so desire. But it's steaming hot and it's delicious and it's ready for you to enjoy. So, there you have it. How easy was that? And you can have a little sourdough bread with that, fresh out of the oven that I overcooked a little bit because I was busy crafting and wasn't paying attention. So that's the way it goes. Okay, so I hope you try this. It's super easy. It's pretty budget friendly, especially in the summertime when you have your own peppers or what you can do is if you clean out your peppers and then freeze them like that whole, then you can have stuffed peppers any time of the year right out of your garden or you can stuff them and freeze them and then you'll have them ready to stick in the oven. You can just stick them in the oven frozen and then you can cook them for, I'd say, two hours. And they'll be great. So, I hope you try it and I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya.